Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. In this lecture, we will learn about leukemoid reaction. This video will include introduction and definition of leukemoid reaction followed by brief discussion about the types of leukemoid reaction that will include discussion about myeloid leukemoid reaction and lymphoid leukemoid reaction and towards the end of today's lecture we will also talk briefly regarding the differences between myeloid leukemoid reaction and chronic myeloid leukemia. Okay, a lot of topics, so let's begin. And we will start by talking about some introductory points regarding leukemoid reaction. Now, in this word leukemoid, the oid suffix means resembling. So here, the peripheral blood of the patient will resemble a blood picture of a leukemic patient. However, this particular patient does not have leukemia. That's why we are saying that this patient has leukemoid reaction. Leukemoid, that means it is resembling that of leukemia. But as we will see when we are doing bone marrow or other studies, that this individual in fact does not have leukemia. So, how can we define leukemoid reaction? Always remember, it can be defined as a reactive excessive leukocytosis in the peripheral blood resembling that of leukemia in a subject who does not have leukemia. Now in this definition there are three key words that you have to remember. They are leukocytosis and that is resembling that of leukemia. So the white blood cell count is high and however the patient does not have leukemia. Now, in many textbooks, you will also find another definition of leukemoid reaction where the leukocytosis is further specified. So, this is another definition and here you can see that a leukemoid reaction is defined by a white blood cell count more than 50 into 10 to the power 9 per liter and the rest is just like the previous definition. It resembles leukemia but arises from other causes such as infection or cancer. So now that we have defined leukemoid reaction, now let's move on and talk about the types. There are two types. They are myeloid leukemoid reaction and lymphoid leukemoid reaction. So first let's talk about myeloid leukemoid reaction. What do we mean by myeloid leukemoid reaction? Here, blood picture resembles either acute or chronic myeloid leukemia and as we will see, there may be marked neutrophilic leukocytosis and there may be presence of premature white blood cells of all stages and all these may mimic chronic myeloid leukemia. So what are the causes of myeloid leukemoid reaction? They will include severe bacterial infections, intoxication, malignant disease, severe acute hemolysis, severe hemorrhage, etc. Now, what are the bacterial infections that can result in myeloid leukemoid reaction? This is very important for your multiple choice questions. They will include staphylococcal pneumonia, disseminated tuberculosis, endocarditis, sepsis, meningitis, diphtheria, etc. What are the causes that can lead to intoxication leading to myeloid leukemoid reaction? They will include mercury poisoning, severe burns, eclampsia. Regarding the malignant disease, they will include multiple myeloma, myelofibrosis, bone metastasis, and Hodgkin's disease. So how can we diagnose a case of myeloid leukemoid reaction? Always remember there will be moderate leukocytosis. However, the white blood cell count will not exceed 100,000 per microliter. The dominant white blood cells are neutrophils, 
However, other white blood cells, including immature cells, predominantly metamyelocyte and myelocytes may be seen, and their amount will be about 5 to 15 percent in the peripheral blood smear. Myeloblasts fewer than 5 percent may also be seen in the peripheral blood smear. The fourth bullet point is very important. In myeloid leukemoid reaction, basophils are normal. If you had watched my video on chronic myeloid leukemia, you know that in that leukemia, there was elevated number of basophils, but in myeloid leukemoid reaction, basophils are normal. Toxic granulation and dole bodies may be seen in the cytoplasm of neutrophils in infective cases. So, what do we mean by toxic granulations? These are purple or dark blue staining azurophilic granules in the cytoplasm of neutrophils, bands, and metamyelocytes. And how they are formed? They result from an abnormality in the maturation of the primary granules, and that leads to retention of their azurophilic properties. So this slide is showing an image of neutrophil. We can see that it has segmented nucleus as usual and the granules are toxic granules. What do we mean by dole bodies? These are small round to oval grayish blue cytoplasmic inclusions that are seen in the peripheral part of the cytoplasm of neutrophils and they are thought to be remnants of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So this slide is showing an image of neutrophil with dole bodies. We can see that it has segmented nucleus as usual. It has the typical fine granules. However, on the left side near the periphery in the cytoplasm, we can see dole bodies. The neutrophil alkaline phosphatase or NAP score will be elevated in myeloid leukemoid reaction and in exceptional cases cytogenetic studies may also be required. So now let's talk about lymphoid leukemoid reaction. So what do we mean by lymphoid leukemoid reaction? Always remember here peripheral blood picture will resemble that of acute or chronic lymphoid leukemia. What are the causes of lymphoid leukemoid reaction? They will include infections and malignant diseases. Infections that can lead to lymphoid leukemoid reaction will include infectious mononucleosis, cytomegalovirus infection, whooping cough, chickenpox, measles, tuberculosis, infectious lymphocytosis, etc. How can we diagnose a case of lymphoid leukemoid reaction? There will be leukocytosis. However, it will not exceed 100,000 per microliter and differential count of white blood cell will show mostly mature lymphocytes and that will simulate or resemble the blood picture that is found in cases of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Now the last topic that we will talk about today is regarding the differences between chronic myeloid leukemia and leukemoid reaction. This slide is summarizing the major differences between myeloid leukemoid reaction and chronic myeloid leukemia. Regarding the total leukocyte count, we can see that in case of myeloid leukemoid reaction, it is higher than normal, obviously, but it is usually not higher than 100,000 per microliter. However, in case of chronic myeloid leukemia, it can be more than 100,000 per microliter. Regarding the differential count, always remember that in myeloid leukemoid reaction, the basophils are normal. However, recall from my lecture on chronic myeloid leukemia, we had seen that in chronic myeloid leukemia, there is elevated count of basophils. So there is basophilia in the chronic myeloid leukemia. Regarding the NAP score or neutrophil alkaline phosphatase score, this is elevated in myeloid leukemoid reaction and it is reduced in chronic myeloid leukemia. 
Philadelphia chromosome and ABLBCR fusion gene, these are absent in myeloid leukemoid reaction and these are present in chronic myeloid leukemia. And regarding organ infiltration, they are absent in myeloid leukemoid reaction. However, they may be present in case of chronic myeloid leukemia. So this concludes our lecture on leukemoid reaction. I hope this lecture was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.